Hello, pilots of the internet. In this video, I am teaching you how to fold the five book winners from this year's foldable flight paper airplane designers contest. And I have to tell you, these are some exceptional paper airplanes. Now I'd like to quickly mention that we are translating our content into Portuguese, Spanish, and German, and we have dedicated channels now for all three of those languages. So if any of those are your native tongue and you'd rather listen to foldable flight content in your own language, just click on the link in the description and subscribe to that channel. We are just launching these channels and I'm really excited to hear your feedback about how we're doing with that content. So please head over there and check that out. And with that, let's get into the video. Now, as I said, we have the five book winners from this year's contest for you today. These are all incredible paper airplanes for different reasons. In the bottom left, we have Valkyrie designed by Nicholas Cheng, which is a really, really good distance paper airplane that locks together in its three dimensional shape. Then we have a boomerang plane. This is back to sender designed by Aiden Dominguez. A distance glider that flies very, very well. This is Century designed by Joelle Zanelli. Then we have an airtime glider that flies for over 20 seconds. This is Palladium designed by Leo Liang. And then finally, we have a paper airplane that flies well, but really just looks absolutely amazing. This is Ripper designed by Irrelevant. So congratulations once again to all of our winners. I am stoked to share these paper airplanes with you today. Let's see them in flight, and then I'll teach you how to fold them. Back to Cinder is a super consistent boomerang plane. Let's see how many times I can catch it in a row. All you will need in order to fold Ripper is a square sheet of paper. If yours is too colored, then begin with the colored side up. And we're going to start by folding this corner here to this corner. And your crease should go right between the other two corners of your square. Okay, give that a nice sharp crease, open it up, and now we're folding between the other two corners. Okay, I'll give that a nice sharp crease as well. And I'll open it up. And then I'm going to flip my paper over now and fold this edge here to that edge. Just folding the paper in half. Just like that. And now I'm going to stand this kind of triangle up over here and I'm going to squash fold it so that this crease 
on this layer is landing just barely to the right of that edge behind it. And by barely, I mean you want like the edge of the crease on the edge of the layer. Basically, if you lined it up perfectly with the edge, you'd be fine. But it should look like this. And then we kind of stand it. Now, that, were, that was my squash fold. I'm now standing the model up on this. And I'm going to kind of open and collapse and squash this whole section now landing this crease here, right between the two points down at the bottom. Just like this. And your model should look like this now. Now I'm going to flip it into this orientation and I'm folding right from this point to this point just on the one layer here, just pulling that toward me, tacking it down right there tacking it down over here and I'll give a nice gentle crease until I flip it over and make sure that this point here is landing on that crease there and then I can just crease by using this top layer I can feel that edge behind it giving it a nice sharp crease here is fine too okay so with the paper in this orientation I'm now going to fold this section that goes past this point right like this and I'm landing again my center crease on my center crease there. Make sure your edges is land your edge is landing on your edge over here. Just like that. And I'll rotate it back into this position here. Now I'm going to fold the top edge here into the center. just like that. And I'll do the same thing on this side. Okay, and now I'm going to open that up, flip the paper over, and I'm going to kind of grab this crease here, like that, and pull it into the center. So I'm pulling that crease and landing the crease right on the center. And then I will need to apply a crease on layers that are behind the ones you're looking at. You can see them up here. I'll do the same thing over here, grabbing that crease, swinging it into the middle, and then the layers that I'm actually creasing are these that are behind, but you'll feel them right like that. Okay, so your model should look like this now. And inside these layers, there's some trapped paper, and we're going to kind of open those up just enough to pull that paper out. And then we can stand that, kind of reversing those creases so it stands nicely, and then forcing that open using the existing creases but reversing them, I'm going to perform a squash fold. It helps if you kind of pull on the paper a little bit, pull towards you to create some tension. That helps it open up nicely. And we'll do a nice squash fold just like that. And now we're going to do a petal fold. Then we're going to prepare for the petal fold by folding this edge here to the center crease. And do the same thing on this side. And I'm going to rotate this into this position here, open those up. And now I'm going to kind of pull this pocket open. Let me highlight some creases for you. We've got a crease there and a crease there actually it goes all the way to those points, but really we're looking at where these creases intersect this edge. I wanna create a new crease that runs right between them. So I just kind of open up the pocket right there and I can kind of force these layers in. That helps me identify where I'm making this crease. And then I can kind of pull that forward and I kind of just massage this into a point and I want the point to go right, to end up right on my center crease. So I'm kind of massaging each side until it's doing exactly what I want and going right to that point at the center, just like that. And then I'll fold that point down 
And I'm going to actually open these up now back into this position and even open it up a little bit farther, just kind of loosely holding all the layers now. I'm reversing this crease that we just made and tucking everything in so it's an inside pedal fold. So that gets tucked in to the model just like that. And it should lie just like this. I'll rotate it into this position now. And I'm going to kick this flap to the left, fold this edge into the center. I'll push that back to the right and now get this flap to the right, fold this edge into the center. and then push that back to the left. Your model should look like this. And now we're going to open this layer up right here. And you can see there's a let an edge right behind it that you want to land this on. So the crease I'm making here lands right along the edge that is behind it. I'll do the same thing on this side. And now I'm going to fold this inner edge, if I can grab this, this edge right here to land along that edge. Do that on both sides. So your plane should look like this. And now I'm going to fold this outer edge to land on this edge, or rather, I'm landing my new crease right along the edge that's behind it. So you can see we've got that edge there. That's my reference. Do the same thing over here. and it should look like this. Now I'll go ahead and unfold this, unfold this, and I'm going to open this up to this position where you can see these creases on this layer, and I'm going to fold and just continue this crease right here up to the top, and you'll see that crease will actually run right along this edge too. So I'm basically just folding and you can see this new edge I'm making runs right along that edge that's behind it. Just like that. And then this new flap I have right here, I'm just folding right back across the center crease, just like that. And then I can kick this flap back to this side. I'll rotate it and do the same thing here. I'm moving these layers to get to this one. And I want to continue this crease right here. Just like that. I fold the portion that's crossing the center crease back across the center crease. And then I can fold this layer down too. Okay, so our plane looks like this at this stage and we have in here, a crease that is currently a valley fold. That's the one that's landing right on the center crease right now. What we want to do is we're going to actually reverse that crease and turn it into a mountain and kind of close this layer down. And we should have pinching what was the valley crease that landed right on our center, pinching that into a mountain and then holding these layers nice and flat kind of collapsing that and you see it should land right along the edge of this layer here. Okay, and then I'll do the same thing on this side, getting these layers out of the way. Here is the crease, so it's that last flap. That's the crease that we need to reverse. So I just kind of find the crease, gently massage it, and then I can close this all down, and again, I'm looking at my crease, which I'm sure is kind of hard to see on camera right now, but 
but I'm making sure my crease ends up sharp but doesn't change its location. And then I push these down, hold these nice and flat, and then I can collapse it so that this edge that I'm making lands right along the edge here. Okay, and now, let's see, I'll rotate it into this position here. We've got these layers that uh, we can now kind of reverse this crease here to tuck them in behind the other layers. No new crease there, just reversing the crease you already have. Do the same thing on this side. Just like that. And now we're going to pull the slack out right here and right here, just on that layer and kind of flatten it like so. And then tuck this portion behind those other layers as well. Okay, and your plane should now look like this. Now we're going to go ahead and fold right along this existing crease here. Just fold that up and out of the way. We'll do the same thing on this side. You're just reversing that existing crease. And we want to fold now this edge here all the way up to this edge right there crease, do the same thing on this side, should look like this. Now take this edge to that edge there, this will create the tails and the tail fins, doing the same thing over here. And then now I'm going to fold this point up and I want to land this edge right here along that edge there. And I'm going to crease right to this corner over here. I'll do the same thing on this side. Okay, and I'm going to unfold all the way back into this position. And now we have a sequence of kind of using the creases as they are and reversing some creases. So if I open this up, I'm looking at this bottom crease now. That is in the correct orientation, and so is the crease immediately after it. Then, uh, sorry, these first three creases, in fact, are all in the right direction. But then once I lay that down, I need to reverse this crease here and reverse the crease after it. I should not be making any new creases as I do this. Basically, I'm making kind of an accordion fold in there of different layers. And I'll do the same thing here one more time so hopefully you can see it. So these, these three creases, one, two, three, are all in the correct orientation. So I just kind of pull the paper, close like that, Close, and as I close this third crease that is in the correct orientation, I'm going to have to reverse the fourth crease and kind of force it to go in the opposite direction. So that crease right there, and then finally this last crease right there I'm reversing as well, and it should lie just like this. And then I'm going to open this just enough. You can see I've got this crease here. I want to fold this point down just like that on the crease that already exists and close that back up. So I'm opening it up just enough right here, folding that point down and closing that all back up. Okay. So it looks like this on this side and this on this side here. So you can see we got tail fins and tails. Now I'm going to fold this point here to be almost to this edge that you can see here, but not quite. And I'm folding from this point right here and missing this edge just a little bit. I'll fold the other side to match. So again, I'm starting my crease there and I'm landing this corner close 
to this edge, but not quite there. Okay, and then I need to actually reverse both of those sides. So I'm not making a new crease here, I'm just folding it in behind all the other layers. Just like that. And now I'm going to create the creases that are gonna prepare us for our jet fold. And the crease is gonna start up here and run all the way down to that corner there. And I'm grabbing just all of these layers. I'm folding straight down to this corner here. Try to get it all the way to that corner. I'll do the same thing over on the other side. Grabbing all these layers, starting right here, going to this corner down here. Just preparing the jet fold. And now we could place creases on this uh, thin layer right along these edges, but I find it's really easy now to just kind of push your nose down a little bit, push your thumbs in and kind of swing these edges in. And then that gives you on this side, you can see it begins to give you this point that starts to come up on the bottom. And once I kind of get it close, I just kind of grab this and pull this nice and tight. You really want to pull tight so that you end up placing the creases in the right spot. Bring those that back edge, these two corners, all the way to each other. And then you can begin to actually place your crease right along this top edge here. Okay, so you can see we are getting close now. I'm going to go ahead and fold my tail fins up. We're going right along the edge of this layer here. Fold the wing up. I'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay, let's move that out just a little bit. And now we are very close. What we need to do is lock this whole thing together. So in order to do that, I'm going to set it in this position here. And open this up all the way into this here. And I want to fold this edge here up to the top of the plane and then fold it one more time. And you can leave just a little bit of slack in the back that'll help prevent a tear, just like that. And you can see we are basically done here. I can go ahead and set my wing angles and everything. But what we need to do is we need to use a pencil or something like that and kind of just force these open a little bit. These are going to be our afterburners in the back. And once you get it open just enough, you can kind of squash it almost, just like this to shape those afterburners and make them look really nice. And look how good that looks. And I like to kind of curl my wings just enough to counteract their natural tendency to bend in one direction so they end up looking nice and flat. And I set the tail fins up at a nice, almost vertical, but not quite angle. And there you go. You have a finished ripper. Thank you so much for folding and good luck flying your plane. All you will need in order to fold back to cinder is a square sheet of paper. If all you have on hand is rectangular paper, it's actually really easy to convert that into a square. Just fold the top edge to the left edge like that. Fold in the opposite direction through the corner like that. And then cut from where these two creases intersect that outer edge. If you remove this little flap of paper, you have a square. And with that, we're going to begin. If you're using origami paper that has two sides, then I recommend starting with the colored side on top. And now we're going to fold those diagonal creases like we had if you were converting your paper into a square. 
just folding from corner to corner, just like this. Take your time, really line up those corners. Just like this. Do the same thing on the other side. Just like that. And now we'll go ahead and fold the top edge to the bottom edge here. And open it up. Flip your paper over so all of these are mountain creases and rotate it so that this is a vertical center crease for you. And now I'm going to fold this edge here to this diagonal crease. And again, my crease should go right through that top corner. Just like this. I'll open that up. And now do the same exact thing on the other side. Creasing right through that top corner. And now we're going to do a really interesting kind of collapse here. So I'm going to open it up, kind of rotate it into this position. And the first thing I want to do is make sure I pop out these two little points so that this section of this uh, diagonal crease is a mountain. You can see we've got two valleys here. And if I kind of push it, it doesn't want to collapse until I make sure this section of that center crease reverses the section between my valley creases here and my mountain creases there. And once I do that, I can actually kind of push it into this shape that collapses just like that. Make sure your corners don't get too messed up as you do this. It tends to kind of catch in weird ways at the corner. And you can collapse it into this shape here. Press everything nice and flat. And I'm going to rotate it into this orientation. And now I can kind of open this section right along that hinge that exists in the middle there. And I'm just folding right along that and continuing that crease right back just like that. Okay, I'll go ahead and unfold that and do the same exact thing on the other side. I'm just flipping it over, pulling this into this orientation here. Okay, and I'll open that up. And now I'm going to rotate it into this position and I'm folding this section down. And basically I want to land this edge here right along that crease I just made. And make sure that your back edge lands right on itself. Just like that. We can unfold that. And now I'll rotate it into this position here. And basically I'm going to do another collapse. I'm opening this whole section right along this crease I've got. And then using this crease here, I begin to lie it flat and I should land this new edge here right along that edge there. Just like that. And now I'll flip the paper over and I want to do the same things here, but you can see this crease needs to become a valley crease. So I'm kind of opening right along that, reversing that whole crease. Okay, so you can see this crease is now a valley crease. I'm opening there, using this crease here to begin to collapse it and landing this edge on that bottom edge. All right, already we're getting there. I'll rotate it into this position and basically open this up right along this edge here, continuing that and making a crease right there. I'll do the same thing on the other side here. We can refine those creases in a moment but I'm going to leave it in this orientation and now make a crease going from this point right here to this point where this crease intersects the back edge.
just like that. And then I will inside reverse fold this pocket. So I kind of stand this up, open it just enough. And this crease here is already in the correct orientation, but I need to kind of push in on the spine here and make that go in the other direction. And this crease here needs to become a mountain. And it reverses inside just like that. And you can see that's gonna create the fin that stands up in the middle of our plane. So with it in this position here, I'm just going to kind of open up everything and lay the fin to one side. And now I can squash fold this central kind of fin, but you'll notice you've got an extra little flap in there. You can just push that to either side as you squash fold this. Just like that. And now we're going to fold this edge right here into the center, just like that. Go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. And it should look like this. We'll open it up and fold the outer edge to this edge here, leaving just a little gap as we do that. I'll do the same thing on this side. And now I can fold in on the creases I already have and just wrap this around those existing layers just like this. Oh, that came unfolded. There we go, just kind of press it flat and you can see everything's nicely locked together at this point. All we need to do are fold some winglets and we're going to fold some pretty small winglets here out on the outer edge just like that. You can just estimate your two sides uh, and try to make them the same size. You can measure, of course, if you would like. And now we stand those vertically and make sure that your central keel and fin are standing vertically. And you can throw it, test it exactly as it is. You kind of angle it like this to throw it in a circle. But if it's not circling back to you, you can bend those back edges up a bit in order to give it a little more of a tendency to circle back. Now with the fin sizes, if you find again that it's not circling back, you can increase the fin size to increase its consistency. Starting with the small fins though, makes it have the widest radius as it's circling. So thank you so much for folding this plane and good luck flying. All you will need in order to fold Valkyrie is a sheet of eight and a half by 11 or A4 paper. And we're going to begin by folding this edge here to this edge over here. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and open your paper up and now fold your outer edges into the center, just like this. Okay, once you've done that, you can go ahead and flip your paper over and then fold your top edge to the bottom edge. And then you'll go ahead and open that up, fold your top edge to the crease you just made, but I would leave just a little gap as you do this, maybe a millimeter or so. So it should look like that. And then you'll just roll it in on the crease you already have there. And your plane should look like this. Now we're going to take this top edge here and fold it into the center. There are thick layers to so really kind of bend them and curl them until you can nice and accurately place that crease. Just like this. 
And then I actually open that side up and do the other side folding in the same way, right to the center. Just like that, and then we'll open that up. Now I'm going to rotate it into this position here. And basically I want you to notice the point where this crease here is intersecting this edge. And basically just on this thick section of the paper, we're going to make a crease going from that point to this top edge here. And so to do that, I'm just kind of pulling the paper. Again, I'm just looking right at that point and laying it in this position here and then making a crease. I'll open that up and just show you what I did again here. There's that nice thick crease I just made. It's going to that intersection there. And then I'm going to make another crease now going from that intersection to this corner. And I don't continue that crease on. I'm just creasing from the intersection to that corner. Okay, I'll do the same exact thing on the other side here. Crease from here to the leading edge. And this should be parallel to that edge there. And now a crease from this point here to that corner. Okay, so I'll rotate it into this position here. And basically, the idea is that we're going to be tucking a new tab we're making behind this pocket. But first, I like to go ahead and pretend as though I'm doing that. So I but have the tab go over the pocket. So you'll see what I'm doing here. Basically, as I fold this and I kind of pull everything forward here, all the slack out of this, so I'm lying on that crease I've made there. I want to make a new little crease here that's going to go from here to about there, but the way I'm doing it is I'm pinching this section here and taking all the slack out of it while holding this flat. And as I close that, that's going to naturally create the crease where it needs to go. As long as you hold this all flat, that should be really good. And you can see when I open that up, we have a new crease made. And what that's going to let me do is I'm going to ultimately be able to tuck this side in behind the pocket just like that. But I'm going to wait to do that until I go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So I'm flattening on that crease there and kind of pinching this crease and pushing those layers into that area as much as I can and allowing it to determine exactly where that crease needs to go. Just like this. And there you go. So now I can go ahead and take this tab I've got and just kind of open my inner pocket, swing all those layers in behind, and flatten it just like so. And I'll do the same thing on this side, just taking that and swinging on those existing creases, tucking everything inside. And now we're ready to go ahead and fold the plane in half just like that, and fold our wings. Now you're going to want to start your wing crease a little bit above the nose or else you're going to rip it. And you're going to land this edge here on the back corner of your plane. So we've got to really curl our layers. We've got very thick layers here. And just kind of swing that into place just like that. And gently crease that like that. And I open up the plane flip it over, and the way I'm folding it to match is I'm looking for the crease I made. This is so thick that trying to fold both wings at the same time can be a real challenge. So I unfold the one wing as I now fold this wing, and I'm just looking for the wing crease I have on the other one, and trying to place my crease in the same point on this wing here. Okay, and then I can kind of stand this up just like this, kind of rock this back and forth either way. You can see that's looking pretty good. And now we want to do the locking mechanism that exists inside the keel of the plane here where we're going to hold it. And in order to do that, I'm going to fold this edge here to the wing crease I have. Just like that. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Now 
Now I'm going to fold this edge to that edge there. And I'm going to unfold this here and now fold this to that crease there. Okay, and so now basically what I'm going to do is we're going to be closing this up and wrapping these layers around themselves. So if I go ahead and tuck that in behind, you can see when I close this up, I'm going to be able to tuck this tab in behind this side here, like that. And then I'm going to need to roll it one more time. So let me actually go ahead and reverse this crease here in preparation. So we should have two mountain creases on this side. I'm going to roll that in and then we're going to end up rolling the pair of creases in on this side here. So let's go ahead, we'll tuck this in behind. So take a good look at what I'm doing here. I'm tucking this section behind the section on the other wing. And now it's kind of locked together, but it'll come unfolded. We need to reach in and roll that whole section inside one more time on our existing creases. Just like that, and that locks everything together. I know that's a little tricky. Hopefully you can understand what I'm doing there. And with that, you have a finished Valkyrie. You really don't need to add any up elevator for this plane, but you'll probably need to make some adjustments if it's rolling uh, counterclockwise or clockwise. You'll have to make some aileron adjustments to compensate for that. So if it's rolling this way, you will probably need to bend this edge up just a little bit. If it's rolling the other way, you would bend the other side up. And with that, thank you so much for folding and good luck flying your plane. All you will need in order to fold palladium is a sheet of A4 or A5 paper. Now the original design is actually out of this smaller A5 paper, which might be surprising to you, but that's actually the case for a lot of these high performance airtime planes. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to use A4 paper, which actually works very well also. And with that, we are going to begin by folding this edge here to this edge. Okay, we'll go ahead and open that up and now fold your top edge here into the center to make a triangle. And do the same thing on the other side as well. Okay, and your plane should look like this. And now we're going to fold our top point all the way down, landing that point on the center crease and crease all the way across the top here. And then we'll open it up. And now we're going to fold it and we're just making a little reference here. We're going to take this corner here and land it on that crease. So I'm just looking at the left edge here and making a little reference mark right when this corner is lying on top of this horizontal crease. And now I'm doing a similar thing. I'm taking the corner to this crease, but I will crease all the way across. So once I have that in position, this corner is on the crease right behind it. I also need to make sure that my point here is on the center crease and then I can crease all the way across. And then I'll unfold that, flip the paper over and fold down on that top horizontal crease I have. So it should look like this. And now we're going to fold the top edge into the center again. Try to control all your layers beneath this as you do that. Make sure everything stays in proper alignment. Once you do one side, of course, you're doing the other side to match. And your plane should look like this. Now I'll go ahead and open these up. I'm actually going to unfold this again and flip the paper over. And I'm going to fold this in and basically I'm taking this corner and landing it right here. And you'll see this edge will land along that crease that I have here. I'm not creasing the whole thing here. I'm just creasing to this horizontal crease right there. 
So you can see what that looks like. I'll do the same thing on this side. So this edge lands on that crease. This corner lands right on that edge down there. As I fold this in, and again, I'm just creasing right to this crease right here. So it'll look like that. And now I'll flip it back over, fold down, and we're going to do a couple steps here, starting with this one where we fold this point up to the point on the center crease where these flaps are. Just like that, crease. And now I'm going to fold the point to the crease I just made. Just like that. And now I'm going to fold this point up, landing it on the center crease, and I want this crease I have here to land on the other horizontal crease I have. So it should look just like that. And now I'm going to unfold that and actually open these flaps before folding back up on that crease I just made. And I'm not making any new creases here, but you can see the paper doesn't lie flat. Basically, I'm just gonna massage it open along existing creases. So I'm folding it into this position here using only creases that already exist. And that just kind of puts that point inside the rest of the model for now. Now we've got another fairly difficult step here. I'm going to create a crease that goes right from this point where this is intersecting the edge to this point right here. So my crease goes right like that. And the model is not going to lie flat as I do this, but I kind of hold this and fan it open right to that point there. And I'm looking, making sure the crease goes right into this pocket and I create that crease. And then to lie it flat, I'm actually going to open up this section here right along this existing hinge. So that's a crease we already have. And I'm going to allow kind of pushing on that and swinging that all the way in creates this bubbled area here. And I'm going to gently lie that flat and crease just like that, okay? Now I have to create the edge here and I'm going to be creasing from this point up here to this point where my diagonal crease is intersecting the edge. Okay, so I define that edge and then all the remaining slack just gets forced in this way as I flatten this. Okay. So my plane should look like that. And we're going to repeat all of that on the other side. So we're starting with a crease from this point to this corner down here. Kind of reach behind and find that point and then swing right to this point here. And I go ahead and define that crease there. And now I'm opening up this pocket and I'm using this crease here as a hinge. And I swing all that in just like that and take this slack and I sweep the slack out down this way to flatten that. Okay, and now I'm going from this point here to this point down here where my crease intersects the edge. And after defining that edge, I take all the slack out this way. Okay, so your plane should look like this. I know that was fairly complicated. Now you can see we have creases on this layer here, but not on these layers that are crossing them. Basically, I'm using that existing crease and just folding this edge in just like this. I'll do the same thing on this side. I like to really try to hold my layers tight as I do this. And it'll look like this. And I'm going to flip it over and now I'm folding the point of the plane down to this horizontal crease, landing it right where that crease intersects the center crease. Just like that. I'll unfold that, flip it back over. 
And I'm actually going to go ahead and open up these just like this. Now we've got some tricky steps. So this one's not yet tricky. We're gonna fold on these existing creases here. Just kind of fold that in, fold that in. But we're creating what's going to become a central lock for the plane here in a really interesting way. We'll fold this up over that edge that it exists beside. So that edge right there, we're just folding this tab right along it like that. And now here's the trick. I'm going to rotate it into this position. I suggest you do the same. Basically, you can see we've got these two tabs and look at us. We have a little pocket that this right tab can tuck into the left pocket here. And then we have a pocket on the back side of this that this left tab will end up tucking into. So I start by tucking my right side into the front pocket of the left side. And this is very fiddly, but you kind of have to bring the two sides of the plane together as you do this. So I'm bringing the two sides together. I just kind of get that in to the pocket and then I swing the two sides together like that. And then I actually pinch these in one hand. Well, I'm losing it. So let me swing that into the pocket. I pinch these as I kind of gently fold the plane into this position and I get a hold of it now in my left hand, I've got those pinched. So I'll show you really quickly again. That slid into the pocket and then I kind of just pinch those in my left hand so my right hand can now take this tab that's here and tuck it into this pocket that exists on the other side. Just like that. And I know that's probably hard to see on camera and it's definitely hard to fold but now I've locked both sides together. That's going to be a locking mechanism for the plane. And I can fold in on my existing creases here and my existing crease here and kind of tuck those layers into the center of the plane. And then I can close the plane up like that. And now I have what's going to be a squash fold at the front of my plane. I kind of stand that up and begin squashing. And then I like to hold it in this position as I actually complete the squash. Line that point up with the center right between the two wings. And then fold right from this point to that point there. Just like that. And then you push the two halves of your kind of square at the front to either side. And we're going to fold our wings now, starting just above this lock and going right through this elbow in the middle. So you'll see as I kind of pull this wing down, my wing crease goes right through this point here. And try to keep it nice and straight and then crease all the way to the back, just like that. And once you do one side, you just flip it over and fold your other side to match. Just like that. And you can see I am almost done with this plane. All that's left to do are folding some winglets on the sides of the wings. And so I'm going to Fold this parallel to the center crease and make a nice small winglet here. So I'm just estimating what's parallel. And once I do one side, I can just position my wing like this and fold this second side to match the first side. And there you go. This is a finished palladium. You just set your winglets like this. So your wings should be nice and horizontal across the back and then your winglet should stand vertically. When you throw this, you're going to throw it straight up in the air, and you might find that as it currently is tuned, just after folding it, that it really has a tendency to nose up and stall. It did for me at least, and that would mean that instead of giving it up elevator, you're actually going to bend the back edges down just ever so slightly and give it down elevator in the back. But of course, test your plane out and see how it behaves for you. If it is nosing down, then of course you can bend the back edges up just a little bit. And with that, thanks for folding this plane and good luck flying. 
All you will need in order to fold Century is a sheet of A4 paper, and you may also decide you want some tape. That's to improve its performance, but that's not entirely necessary to fold this plane. So with that in mind, let's begin by folding this edge here to this edge here. Okay, we'll go ahead and open that up. And now let's fold this top edge to the bottom edge. And we'll open that up once again. And now I want you to see this intersection between the two creases we've made. We want to fold from that intersection to this corner. So basically that's the same thing as folding from corner to corner except we aren't going to create a crease on this section of the paper up here. So you can see, basically I'm pretending like I'm gonna go corner to corner, and then I'm just locating that intersection of these creases here, tacking that down with my finger, and then folding to this corner here. And you can see, again, I'm not creasing this upper section of the paper. When I open that up, you'll see what that looks like, and I'll do the same thing on this side. So I look for that intersection of these creases, just kind of tack the paper in place and fold down to this corner here. Just like that. Okay, so now if we fold in, I'm going to kind of position it like this, I guess. I'm going to reverse this little section of the paper between those two creases. So you can see I've positioned it so these are mountain creases here. And then I'm going to position it just like this. And now if I open on this hinge here, I really want to make sure that this layer holds very tightly to the layer behind it as I do this. And I can just fold that down like this and place a new crease. Then I'll open that up, flip it over, and do the same exact thing on this side, making sure this layer doesn't move as I open on this hinge. Just opening it like that, placing a crease, and now I can kind of position it like this, stand this whole thing vertically, and squash fold it like this. And I want to land these corners here on the corners I have there. Okay, so it should look like this from this side, like this from this side. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up here. I'll rotate it into this position, open it up like this. And I want to reach behind and poke that point there into this position, pull these into the center, flip it over, and now collapse this down like that. So we've just reordered our layers a little bit and you'll see when I flip it over what this side should now look like. Now we're going to take this bottom edge here and fold it almost all the way up to the top, but you're going to be shy of that point by maybe half a centimeter. You can measure that if you want, it doesn't have to be exact. And we'll crease across these layers here. Okay, and now the portions of these that go beyond the leading edge of our plane, we're just folding it back in and leave just a little gap here between the new crease you're making and that edge. My gap's maybe just a little more than a millimeter and I'm making that crease parallel to the leading edge of the plane. And I'll do the same exact thing on this side. Okay. And now I'm taking this edge here and folding it to land right along that edge I just made in the previous step. So it should look like that. We'll do the same thing on this side. And now one more time on each side, we're going to take this edge here and fold it to those edges we've got. And again, I'd leave just a tiny gap this time between this edge and the edge you have under it and do the same thing over here. Okay, 
So now we've really strengthened the leading edge. And basically what we need to do is we need to take this whole section along this crease, everything ahead of that crease is going to flip inside this pocket. So I'm going to position it like this and I need to reverse this horizontal crease and tuck everything behind. And that's a little tricky, but you should focus on this central section right here and get that kind of flexing into a mountain crease and then curl this as you tuck it in and just kind of wrap it around just like I'm doing here until you fully reverse this whole horizontal crease. And then once you get that, you can kind of massage everything, get it to lie nice and flat again, just like so. And you can see how clean that's looking now. And we can just fold in half on our existing center crease. And if you want to measure, the measurement here is five centimeters above this corner. That's where the back of your wing crease will be. The front will be just a little bit above the nose of the plane. I'm just going to go ahead and fold mine. I'll leave it to you to measure if you want. But you can see they're going to be nice and broad wings that you get as a result. You know, something like this. And once you do one, you just flip it over, fold the other side to match the first side by lining up your corners. And there you go. So now we're going to open this up. You can see my wings are not necessarily uh, nice and flat, so you could sweep out a little slack if you need to. And it's unlikely that you're going to need much up elevator on this plane. But if you find that it's nosing down, you can bend the back edges up a little bit. If you find that it's even really stalling, you could even consider bending down the back edges just a little bit to test the balance of your plane that way. And of course, if you want to use some tape, you would just take a little bit, tape across the middle here, and you can even, if you wanna make it really aerodynamic, consider taping these edges to the tail feathers. And with that, you are done with Century. Thank you so much for folding, and good luck flying your plane. Thank you so much to all of my patrons who are supporting this channel and making these videos possible. I'm now releasing a new tier where you can become the pilot of your favorite foldable flight paper airplane, and your name will appear next to the paper airplane you choose in each of my YouTube videos. So head over to patreon.com slash foldableflight and join the foldable fleet today.